Greetings and welcome to the Bridges of Meaning Hub channel. I'm Chad the Alcoholic. And, uh, so I was listening to this, uh, Krauss Peterson interview this morning. And it was, I think it's better than the first one that we heard a few months back. But, um, <laughs> I like that the guys, you know, that Krauss is being intrigued and bothered by some of the statements that Peterson has made, but uh, I'm going to play a clip. So I'll play the clip now. You, something greater than you and potentially dangerous has come into view. That's the embodied part of that. Of course, it's way oh, more. Well, if I look at the night sky yeah. and nod by it, yeah, yeah, it's that's certainly something greater one, than eh? me. Yeah, It's certainly something greater than me. Yeah. I, I don't know whether it's potentially dangerous because it sort of seems to be out there and separate. Uh, I mean, th th unless unless you have astrology or some bit of nonsense, but well, it's, it's awe inspiring, you know, even though it's completely, at least on the surface, unrelated to me. Well, it's it's also a place though where you do, in some real sense, confront the infinite unknown. Oh yes, it's right well, there. It, 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 well, it is. And the it's, infinite it's right unknown will swallow you. It swallows me every day. Well, it'll swallow <laughs> you when you die. It will do that. You're surrounded well, it, by it. Well, I, when I die, it won't swallow. It, 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 I mean, yeah, when, it, you know, when you, what do you mean? When you say things like that, it, I don't know what you mean. What well, you, mean you dissolve with, into it because it's a hurrah. You just look, end. You just, you well, just, it's, that's yeah, it. You, I know, but you, don't get, you don't dissolve into some mystical, I understand. infinite I'm not, unknown. I'm not, it's, I'm not trying to say that. It sounds too new age. I know you're not, but then when you say it. Look. It's it's natural for people to then jump into this new age nonsense. Yes, so I, I, right. I want to, absolutely. I want to hold your feet to the fire only because I care. You should. You okay. absolutely should. All right. <clears throat> We're back. Uh, when I hear him talk about this, I think for a guy who's a physicist and a scientist or whatever, uh, the level, the, 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 the depth of shallowness the shallow depths of his thinking is astonishing to me to say that um like the the cosmos when you look up at the sky and you look up at the universe and, it, and it's out there and that that's not terrifying because it's out there is absolutely ridiculous And, I mean, like, what he's saying is, he's untouchable. <laughs> it's so silly. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, and, you know, when Peters, Peterson says, like, oh, like, it'll swallow you. When you die, it'll swallow you. Like, I'm trying to understand exactly what that means, but... Um, Maybe what he's saying is if you're lucky enough to be on a deathbed and have your last last breaths of coherent thought, I think that'll swallow you. Um, I had a talk to my father last week and um, he was telling me about my grandfather. Uh, my grandfather passed away few months back and um they didn't they didn't have good uh communications in the last year or so year or two of of my grandfather's life and um and my my grandfather and my grandfather's wife my grandma <clears throat> um spent a lot of time together and she he died in her arms um, on the bedroom floor and the last thing that he said to her uh, I, my, grand, my grandmother just told my dad this so I just recently heard about it but the last thing he told her was looking into her eyes was I'm sorry and What my dad seemed to kind of 
when he was telling me the story, he seemed to feel remorseful about it or s something like this or sad for him. And I think, you know, there's a, that's appropriate to a degree. But there's also a part of it that what, what, I, what I heard him say when in saying and having the great privilege of being able to look somebody in the eye upon your last breath and say, I'm sorry, is, it to me, sounds like a prayer. It's an honest statement, a plea for forgiveness, not just to my grandmother, but, like, to, to what's left undone in general. And that's being swallowed by the cosmos when you die, right? It's like, and just think about that. And so, God bless uh, Mr. Carlson. I mean, I think we do such a, a vigorous job of trying to hide, run and hide because of so many reasons but it's it's really something man so i'm really grateful i got to hear that about my grandfather it, it put me at peace for him because that's uh yeah I hope that I, that I might have that opportunity. And so, <clears throat> let's see. Let's take that another level. I think that's what, when, when people have a religious conviction or a, 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 a spiritual awakening or a religious awakening, they try to live their lives as if to say, I'm sorry, right? It's that same prayer of, I'm sorry. Because I might not have the opportunity to say those words. I might not have an opportunity to have a, a final revelation where I get to, to state a plea of forgiveness. Forgiveness to and forgiveness from. So, this is what we're trying to do when we live well. Try to live better than we were you know, yesterday, try to live better than I did 10 minutes ago, um, to, to live that prayer, and it's very difficult, there's a lot of distractions, and there's a lot of reasons to be resentful and to not be sorry, so, uh, yeah, well, thanks for listening, with that I'll pass.